And just like that, we are back in it. All right. So, yeah. Lots of new stuff happening this last week. Um, yeah. Obviously Christmas and all and, that. Uh, we got two new drops. Um, I got to watch both of them finally. I checked out that uh, the new Soul movie from Pixar and Disney. Nice. Um, it was good. Um, I will say, I don't know, at, towards the end... I got the end and it was very heartfelt, but it, you know, you, it didn't pluck on my heartstrings as much um, like other Pixar movies have done in the past for me. <laughs> I get the waterworks going for me all the time. <laughs> no, I mean, but, uh, I, I totally get that. They're very heartfelt films and like, yes. I feel um, a lot of their value comes from that, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, what's their most recent release besides Soul? Isn't it not Coco? Um, uh, you know, it may have been Coco that was their last thing that they did. It very well could have. Here, I'm gonna take a quick check and see if that's the case. Um, <laughs> no, they had a couple other little things. Uh, they had Onward this year. Oh yeah, you know what? That's right. Onward was probably must was. Uh, I feel like that was they, the most recent. They have that one is the most recent. Then they have a couple of short films. Oh, okay, yeah. And I've, actually, I've a couple of uh, they have a couple of short ones. I think after that, uh, there's got to be more. Um, because I just know they do a decent amount of films. You know what I mean? Uh, Toy, mm -hmm. Toy Story Four, uh, Incredibles Two. Those two were in between. But if we go for originals, it would have just been Onward and Soul. So, um, and, I, you know, those, that one has a pretty heartfelt piece to it as well. So it's it's definitely, uh, I, like you said, it's kind of a staple for Pixar's. And it might just be that particular film didn't resonate with you, but. Maybe that's that's what I was thinking, too. I, th I don't think it, uh, um. I'm pretty sure. There'll be a lot more people. It will kind of hit them a little bit more, but I enjoyed it still. I, I, you know, I thought it was good. I thought the animation is something that they always do. They always like seem to improve on like new and then things on whatever they're doing. Uh, especially like the, um, I, I can't really explain them. They're kind of like the the keepers of the beyond kind of, and they kind of keep everything in check. And um, the way they designed them, they didn't really design them like really like full bodies. They were like. Um, you know how like, when you see those uh, those kids for Halloween and they dress up in the black suits and it's just the, the lines or whatever d drawn on them? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, that's kind of what they look like. But they look hmm. kind of like even Picasso kind of style too. Looked all weird, shaped nose. And uh, even one of the guys who says, he's like, this, we're just, uh, you know, we're uh, higher, uh, you know, I guess higher. This is what your your mind can comprehend of us. <laughs> um, so it was, it was cool. I thought that was really cool the way they designed those. Um, those creations and it was cool how they even made a move throughout the movie um so that was different i thought that was cool um you know and it was cool too because this is also a um kind of a pixar movie just mostly done for the black demographic really um there's a whole scene with the barbershop um which i thought was really cool uh he kind of messes up his hair and he <laughs> and he's like oh you know we got to go to the barbershop fix my hair <laughs> so and uh, it was really cool. They had uh, they had all that. I really liked the jazz in it too. Involved uh, okay. soundtrack was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was just uh, it was a movie just about basically life, pretty much. So I I, I enjoyed it again. Uh, just didn't pluck on my heartstrings as much. Like I said, that's probably the only thing. <laughs> cool. All right. So you said you saw both. So I assume that means you also saw Wonder Woman. Yes, on, uh... I just seen that today yeah, as well. Nice. I actually uh, saw that earlier as well. So. And uh, that as well, I um, I enjoyed. It wasn't too bad. Um, there was um, there um, the ending was kind of like a lot to take in, but it was like yeah, it was okay. It didn't really further like the DC universe, but that's kind of like what it seems like they're doing because Aquaman kind of did the same thing. Where yeah, they don't have really much didn't connection. Further, yeah, yeah, it didn't no further the connection as all. Well, so. There were a couple things. I will say, and it's rough for me, I think, more so on this one. And maybe I just would. Maybe I'll have to watch it again and get another look and see. But it was rough for me because the first Wonder Woman is, like, my favorite uh, DCEU movie. 
uh-huh. out of all the ones they've made so far, at least. Um, but this one didn't really. I felt like there were a couple of things in this one that kind of bugged me uh-huh. as I was watching through it. Uh, I guess we probably shouldn't do a spoiler cast two days after the. Yeah, film. not yeah. too much. Um, I, mean, I, I felt like, like there were Pedro Pascal. I he he was he good. did pretty good. He did fine acting. I felt like they they did the character wrong in a lot of ways. See, so. and I and I don't know too much of the DC character. So who's his? Who was his villain? Maxwell I, I kind Lord. Of it was supposed to be Lord, right? Yeah, it's Maxwell but, Lord. And so okay. in the cast, so like I can say that without I guess giving up too much, but because that's something people know outside the movie is. Uh, so Maxwell Lord's power is the power of suggestion. Okay. So okay. he tells you something, and he can like he can you basically talk to you and take over your mind. So uh, it's almost kind of like uh, the it was, Purple Man. Yeah, he's very much the Purple. <laughs> he's very much like the Purple Man. Uh, I will say that ob- at TV versions, comic versions, the Maxwell Lord is the better version of the Purple Man. He's the purple okay. man. If the purple man was also a successful business guy who, uh, okay, you know what I mean? The purple wasn't man's purple. kind of like a con man almost in he, kind of low level. He is, I will say though, that the purple man as depicted in live media, the actor they got to do the purple oh, man for Jessica, way was good. Yeah, I like so it. good. One, of, uh, one of my favorite depictions of a villain, period. Yes, uh, that was. Yeah, it was really awesome. That's That was one of my favorite seasons yeah, of uh, Jessica Jones. Absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. It's, um, but uh, yeah, so Maxwell Lord, because of some of the differences in both character power and then like uh-huh. uh, even objectives to a point, I guess, uh, I felt was like not fitting well. I felt like they weren't necessary. Like the villain I would have liked to see more expounded on being Cheetah didn't get the screen time I was expecting. Mm. Yeah, um, I kind of felt like I, I knew she was kind of going to be one of those side villains. You know how they did yeah, with and, Spider-Man. And I and was hoping did, like, that they did it the other way with Maxwell Lord being... Because Cheetah really is uh, her main yeah, villain. Yeah, she does have a... Yeah, I've, I've heard there's uh, some pretty good... Uh, but then isn't there multiple people that have played that role in the comics? No, it's always the same chick. Dr. Minerva. It's always her. Like maybe for like a one comic run, but ninety nine point okay. nine percent. And then that was the other thing: the power origins for both of them were totally different. Yeah, I um, kind of thought they were going to be different because she did the wish thing. So I was like, oh, that's probably not how it went down in the comics. There's a couple the way they read there, it in. There's a couple that, and I think that being my overall issue with this one is the writing in this one. I don't feel like was up to par. Uh, com- especially compared to the last one in the way that it incorporated the origin story, even though it changed it, it did incorporate a lot of the important facets of the story and made them like canon through different means. Uh huh. And then there were just like some writing holes in the story where I was kind of like taken aback, where it's like, huh. all right, well, people can make multiple wishes sometimes, but not this. And then everybody in the world just magically announced renounces their wish <laughs> unlike right. even the even the terrorists and the bombers in the fucking... well i guess that's because <laughs> she'd she say she's trying to talk to but then i'm pretty sure there's gonna be a few people that probably didn't renounce their... right we'll see if this, if that, this plays into yeah the... we'll see what's we'll up see. with it maybe maybe they save it in another movie but We'll there see. were there but, were to me it didn't the, feel like it connected anything though. No, so far. there were there were very few feelings of any kind of connection. You you couldn't even like... you you only know that this is before Justice League because it's 1984. Oh, yeah. 84, Other, yeah, otherwise, it, nothing matters. And which was cool because I guess it kind of gave them a lot of free range yeah, to not I, worry about what's been done already. And but I like that it's, except you know... for then then at the exact opposite end is anything that happens here should have meaningful consequences yeah Yeah. later in that all right we just had this whole worldwide ridiculous crisis that people were conscious of as well people were conscious of this happening and renouncing their wish and and so it's just like this whole thing where it's like all right everybody just decided not to talk about that anymore we're like cut that noise (laughs) Uh, i was curious how they were gonna bring back the uh 
the boyfriend so and that was that uh, was a, that was at least decent that's also one of the things i didn't like about this one uh was, they, it was more it was, focused on him a little no bit. it's it was the same there were, all right it had two issues that dc has already become infamous for for me at least one is the nonsense getting rid of characters that you're just going to bring back in the next movie anyway uh-huh. so they did the same thing with superman versus batman into justice league being like all right kill superman all right we need him right back like uh-huh. he stays dead for very little time in the same kind of sense for us not for her obviously but for us he's right back into the story is you know what i mean you spend like 20 minutes without right. him and then he's a big facet of the story and he looks like himself despite being in the other you know what i mean she sees him as it him just... Yeah, at least I explain that. Just as, I just I mean, you as you. Yeah, and I get that, and it's interesting. So then, coming to my second piece was the drama for this one was the same as the last one. In that the drama is losing Steve Trevor again. Yeah, I kind of said that to him. I was like, "Oh, well, that sucks. See, she lost him again, Daddy." <laughs> <it." laughs> and so, is he coming back in three and getting lost again? We need something new. Uh, Do you feel me? We'll and see, so, that's probably it, the last there, of him for sure. I God, think. I hope so. <laughs> Fuck, man. So, like, those were those really knocked my score down for this one as a critic. And then watching it in some ways, there were things as well. So, the opening scene with with child Diana. Totally not needed at all. Zero connection to the story, really. It's it's really done more as like a parable opening of like the truth will set you free kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did just like watching the little. It, oh, I like seeing the, little Diana and doing things, thing. but... but as a story facet, it really doesn't. Yeah, it's, add I know. To the story. Mean, yeah, Nor no does need, yeah. the next scene. I can't remember exactly what the next scene was, but both both of the first scenes are basically not inherently well, the important. The next one's like more of like where she's kind of like just helping in the day and age of the eighties. Yes, stuff where she's which helping. the the only thing about that scene that was connected in a in a meaningful way to the story was the back, the black market dealings in the store that was being robbed. Otherwise Mm -hmm. you could have taken her out of that situation and replaced her with cops and just had her show up later. No, it was it. And the purpose for it was to show off her fighting. Obviously. Which I liked. And that was fine. um, I I just felt like I would have liked her uh, costume. Yeah, it felt brighter to me in oh, this. Uh, I really this wasn't movie. paying that much attention to it. I mean, hmm. it looked a little bit different, uh, but I felt like it was gen- gen- generally similar. Yeah. And then the new one being interesting, although there was stuff about that that kind of I'd even seen pointed out on a post where it was just like, yeah, she brought this out and then it immediately gets mm, torn to pieces and she just takes the wings off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, hold on. I was trying to think of something though, because they, they, I think they changed that because in the trailer, I think I remember when she shows her wings off, the wings are perfectly intact and and fine. Um, so I was like, wait, they did change that in. They changed you know, the same couple thing they things. Did with the oh, Thanos, for sure, for sure. With the the uh-huh. missing uh, stones. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, and so there were there were, and it wasn't necessarily like a thing there. It was just that once again a thing of like, all right. They have this armor. Why do we have this armor? What mm-hmm. as a story point for me, it was like, ah, it's just there to look cool. <laughs> it doesn't grant her any extra power necessarily in the fight from Cheetah. Uh-huh. Or like I, it defends her or whatever for or whatever. I mean Yeah, I guess, for the spoilers. most most part. But I mean it then was, they it was... fight for a good portion of time after that. Yeah. I at least will tell you I like the ending better, the fight scene at least than the first movie when we uh, got there. Yeah, the... <laughs> the, it did suffer from the exact same problems though. the The ending and the villain being the biggest issue of the show, this the movie. Mm-hmm. And, but the difference being is I felt the first one had a lot of stronger points in a lot of areas, as at least in certain parts. And that's not to say that this one's weak at all. It's still probably one of the stronger DC movies at least. Uh, it was just like again, I wanted something more from the cheat aspect, and they ended up changing so much of it that I was kind of like, 
they changed so much that they needed a really good story to like push the new villains and the new uh direction i guess because that's the other thing is now we don't really have any total direction for it like we have a wonder woman 3 coming out but what's it going to be about because maxwell lord and cheetah have now both you know well she didn't really technically renounce her her we don't see wish yeah we don't see her do that one but then once again she's not even that first wish has her being is something that's not her comic accuracy but we'll what are they what gonna they do? do yeah like yeah. It, it it's it doesn't seem like they've set themselves a good pedestal and i i didn't even check did patty jenkins write this one again um you would hope so but you well, know i don't know if she did i'm not i'm not too sure i think they may have gotten somebody else to do this one no it, it says it's her her. again oh that's cool that's good at least they still kept the same yeah it didn't feel like it to me but like it, it's you know everybody I mean, has their own other preferences than that, it was it was good i, I mean i like the fighting scenes like I said there was some story kind of stuff that was like meh but other than that, overall, it, it's a good movie to, I guess, check out first time, at least watch. And yeah, that's it's, about it. it's but I definitely... Worth, I like, oh my gosh, I, I hated the whole thing. Oh, no, <laughs> it's not like, oh, this movie sucks. It's like, no, it's not that this movie sucks. It's that the other Wonder Woman was a, few a things, little bit yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. I'd say maybe a seven for this one. Yeah, that's probably where I'm going to go you with know, on this one, It's just kind of an average yeah. movie. I know that it was um half and half, too, with the, uh, everyone else with this movie. Um. So there's some people that loved it, and there were some people that are like, meh, it wasn't that great at all. Yeah, I've seen some people who are like up and down on it uh, in general. I know, I mean, there were cool parts that were in there. I feel like one of the other things is some of the cool parts were shown in the trailer. Some of them weren't. You got some cool surprise stuff that weren't in yeah. trailers, which was nice. I like that they kept um, Cheetah a little bit hidden because we didn't really get to see her final uh, form yeah. too much in the trailer. So that was cool. That, I really liked that, that was good. I do wish they'd have done better on that final form but. <laughs> um well other than that that's pretty much all i have to say about that movie yeah but, wonder um... woman was fine uh we didn't talk too much about uh, uh cyberpunk last week and that's been out oh, for a minute yeah, yeah. Now, so we could probably um, talk about that one so yeah I've, I've i've been really doing more of the side missions more than anything nice um, have, i've um probably like 45 percent on b nice Very um nice. But uh, yeah, so I've been doing a lot of that. Side missions are cool. I have noticed that there is some missions still that are a little buggy still, like the one, I don't know if you've done it, where it's uh, Dry Bill Jop, Jopskin or whatever his name is, the one who gets his wife killed by the serial killer. I don't know. Um, jo that. Joseph Stefan or something. Anyways, yeah, the, <laughs> this mission's really weird because like... Is that the one where he wants you to kill someone or whatever and he makes you drive his car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he makes you drive the truck. The, He's like a construction worker almost. That I think that's the only mission I failed. I couldn't follow the car because the driving in that game was awful, and I hit like five traffic things. I had heavy trap, heavy crowd on. So. Well, I, I <laughs> it felt like a lot of those things are scripted because like the car waits there, and as soon as you pass by, it's like, oh, him or come. And then <laughs> there's a couple that so, are, but then there's some random ones where it's like, yeah, there is. Um, but and then nah, the, that's the one I do didn't something do. Something weird where it'll be nighttime. And then right away it like changes into night uh daytime. I'm like what the I hell have I haven't had that one yet, but maybe I have, but sometimes I'm not always paying the most attention. So uh other than that, there was a couple um, little I, my my big ones are for are just issues. Like I don't mind a bug as long as it doesn't mess up my progression. So like my big thing is I've finished all the missions and side missions except for two that are bugged out. They're just bugged out and won't finish. Oh, so you haven't done yeah, it. Okay. I looked up how to finish them online and everything. So I was like, all right, what am I doing wrong here? They're bugged out. So I don't know. Hopefully, maybe one of the, because they just did a hot fix I haven't played since. Yeah, they've, and, been, uh, they've been putting some fixes really fast, uh, like really fast. Well, they had this some minor like the... fixes on the first one. That didn't really do yeah. much. But this the second like one is supposed to be a bigger fix. This is probably like the fifth uh, fix they already pushed out, I feel like. Uh,. Because they they did a day pat they did a day one patch fix, and then after that then uh, then they did another fix like I think two days after that when they came after release then they came out with another fix right after yeah like, a they've week been later. doing a lot of little stuff but none of it's been yeah. like very no no no, no nothing major but uh yeah. they 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 have been pushing a lot of like uh updates though throughout since yeah. it's been out I so. think that's it's good and bad like me and someone else have talked about how it's 
basically a game that's like roughly 80 percent done or so and so there's just like stuff that's not quite there yet in some cases where... uh-huh. but the stuff that's there is good you know what i mean it's fun it's uh looks good it's interesting to watch as a story or play as a story yeah the story's really good i thought oh. they did a wonderful job with the story i will say still some of the options and the way dialogue is parsed out still bugs me a bunch as like i'm doing mm-hmm. my second playthrough now on like a corpo because i did street kid first oh and so uh it's the similar issues where it's just like these things where it's like click forward click forward click forward but there's no real option to the dialogue i'm just clicking forward in a sequence where mm-hmm. i could otherwise have just let it continue you know what i mean yeah the the those dia- those extra side dialogues are more to get more well not context, even not even like... the side ones where you hit one where it's like the oh, blue oh. text but literally where it's just like you have the one response and then the next one you just have the one response it's like well if i've only got one response oh, yeah okay so and there's yeah. then you should just group them all together and i wonder my only thing i think of is it's probably maybe a loading thing or a memory issue to like parse out the different sections of dialogue matched with the facial animation because they have that mouth thing that conforms to the sound or whatever and a lot of cool stuff in the game but it's just little things like that where i'm like i wonder why it's this way you know what i mean even as opposed to maybe necessarily being like a bad thing just like because there's got to be an explanation for why they did it that way Uh uh-huh I just have no clue as to why it is. <laughs> like, there's some of them. Because the other ones I've seen where I've like played more, I'm like, all right, well, this is an option where you wouldn't have this if you were playing on a different thing. So that's why this has this here, because you can take a different option, but only if you're in this particular starting, whatever, or you have uh-huh. this many strength points or reflex points. But those those ones aren't my big problem ones. Those are like fine. And even the extra information ones to a point, I do think that it should tell you that they're color coded <laughs> cuz it takes it'll take you a second to figure out otherwise that the blue ones don't do anything different but the yellow ones are actually different choices. Mhm. So that would be something nice to like tell you. But besides that, I mean the besides dialogue and some random assets switching places, I don't really have too many issues or I mean the bugs but yeah. It, uh, for me, I'm still having fun with it. Um, oh yeah, I like uh, I like some of the cr- crazy weapons that like the smart tracking guns are really cool. I've been I, ha- really having fun with those. I thought it was interesting because uh, I've gotten more and more as I've gone on towards the end of the game, and you uh-huh. know the random different ones, and I'm just like the the uh, way they function is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're really cool. So I've been having fun with that. My Skippy's my main one. I've yeah, been using for a little Skippy's bit. the Skippy's an interesting one. He's something I feel like if you, especially like on your second playthrough, you'll run and grab Skippy early on because yeah. it's a fun little one. I do feel like there was something with Skippy that they didn't finish because there's like interactions with Skippy that don't seem quite uh done. Huh. Yeah, I know that they they have that not bug, but I know that he um, because it gives you that choice at the beginning if you want to be non headshots or uh, non lethal uh, shots, and he pretty much tricks you <laughs> into picking the first one, and then later on after fifty kills or so, he ends up he ends up giving you another conversation, and he ends up switching it to the other choice that you didn't want. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so he, yeah, he's a, it's a really fun character that that one, um, I got the mantis blades early on too. There's a, there is a set that you can get early on in the game that, uh, you don't even need to be a high level and, uh, you'll be able to equip them pretty easily. Um, and they've been really fun. So I've been enjoying those too, messing around with those. I'll I'll pull those out. I feel like I I do kind of a mix of everything. I do the guns. Sometimes I'll do some stealth. Well, there is some, uh, missions that I guess require some stealth. You don't really have to. But, yeah, they're um, usually optional, which I do enjoy that they and have they do the have some consequences stealth. though. I know, like the one yeah. where I'm doing right now is where um they say try to go in sneaky and don't kill anybody while you're in there. Uh, and uh, yeah, because the option does change where she she gets upset with you and doesn't give you as much money. <laughs> that and that's always what I 
I've kind of played through a couple where I actually go back and redo them to see what the other option is because I'm just interested in like mm-hmm. what what's the difference in like I'll I'll usually choose the one that gives me more money. <laughs> right. It's expensive in this game, man. Like it is, it I, is. Yeah, I, it is. I think I spent a solid four hours using the money hack to buy shit, and I still don't have everything. Yeah, there's so much stuff. That's for sure. Yeah, like um, you really just buy what you need and just go back for stuff later. Cause that's kind of what I'm doing yeah, right now. Yeah, I will say the one one thing that I know, I know the reason they do it to a certain extent, but sometimes I wish that they would open it up in different ways. Is the limit of your skill build? Like you can only put sk- not uh like attribute points, or no, maybe it's the attributes, but but the points for your strength and cool and everything you don't have enough to max out more than like two of those stats once you reach max level. Oh, really? Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's a little bit rough because, and I know why they do it. So you have to go through another time and do a different build or whatever, but I really like games where you can just keep leveling to your max output and see how the game runs. Right. Uh, And so that's one where I'm like, ah, but that's a personal kind of preference thing as opposed to like a, a standard like everybody thing so mm-hmm. i'm just like man i wish i could see what it was like to have to run the game with this in this fashion but i haven't said that once again i really enjoy it i definitely think it's worth the money i've definitely got my money my time and money worth out of it yeah i've uh, been playing def- definitely <laughs> on it too as well so yeah. it's been fun. Um, like I said, the story's been pretty cool. Guns are pretty cool that they and then just the different mods that you can add on. Um, trying to make the most badass gun you can. <laughs> yeah, I um, will say that I wish that th- this has a lot of generalized stuff, and I wish some of it had more focus. So like, I feel like everything in this has a nice general, uh, decent build, right? Like the gun combat is okay the the gun variety is okay the build variety is okay but nothing goes into a very specifically deep like there's nothing that's very specifically amazing about any one portion of the gaming dynamics except for probably the story variety Mm -hmm. and so i i sometimes wish that there was a little more customization in guns or a little more customization variety in like the build of your uh character because i feel like a lot of the character skills you get are not too varied like the things okay. you do for your hacking attributes and stuff well hopefully they they made some pretty good decisions when they first built this game and um they'll kind of almost be like destiny destiny's been really good at like just adding things into the game that like you didn't think <laughs> like just uh sparrow racing like that that was like yeah. something like that was just random like oh wow they added sparrow racing into the game yeah they did um, some pretty decent stuff in that they, keeping they through. Did some, yeah pretty cool um i'm hoping that they can they have like kind of like a sandbox kind of thing where they can kind of go in and mess with some stuff I'm, my big hope is actually and... that they open up the map because they already yeah, have cool. what they have now and it i mean it would be difficult but Especially, and that's one of the things I will say about the game I did like, is that all the the city felt like a real city. Like you move and traverse yeah, it. That's, and it's that's built. what I really liked about it too. It felt it really did feel alive. The world, that's for sure. Having said that, there are some points in it, and a lot of open world games do it where I just feel like the map is not traversable very well by the player, <laughs> where you have to go like all the way around some giant obstacle like a wall or the river or this thing, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, God, I hate this. <laughs> also fall dynamics in this game are garbage you know that's really weird because i think that's bugged out because like literally i went up just like a little uh like, anthill or something and then i went and he fell and he was dead i was like oh, wow i don't know what exactly <laughs> it is so i did tests right because i was getting tired of like all the bullshit blah blah, blah. and uh like i would go from one level right where i jumped off and it only gave me 100 damage and I'd go uh-huh. above that level, and it'd kill me. Like, there just huh. always seemed to be this height, like two or three stories, that no matter where you jump for, or high how how high, and there were some things you could get that reduced fall damage and all this other shit, but those didn't seem to do much, man. Like, it was Garbo. It was not... Huh. Like, he was just better not to jump off shit, which really sucked, because I went and got the leg... <laughs> the leg cyberware. 
Oh, to see if that would help a little bit, but it didn't. No, not in the way. <laughs> I mean, it was cool. It helps in different ways, but it doesn't prevent okay. fall stuff. So I see. I mean, right. but that wasn't too bad. And once again, so I, that was a good game. What else? Uh... Then I noticed like scope is really weird. Like if you're looking in the cameras, and then. And then you come out of it like it will be stuck in that vision. Not that yeah, vision, but you'll some... see like the, like the, um, what is it? Just the guide that tells you where everything's at. So like you'll see that. Or um, what was another thing I noticed? Um, I don't know. There's a few other little things I noticed are just like weird. I mean, it's not game breaking, but still it's just like, and then I have to like press pause or I have to take a gun out to actually make it go away <laughs> or uh, yeah, there's this yeah, weird thing. I, like I remember a couple times where my health bar would just straight disappear. Wow. Okay. That was a fun one where I act like I could see myself in the red, you know, where you get super red and everything's like freaking out, but my health <laughs> bar wasn't there at all. So I'm like, I don't know how dead I am. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, just little stuff like that. Uh, I remember once or twice my gun didn't load, but my bullet did. So you could see me just holding nothing in a bullet in a chamber. <laughs> it was pretty funny stuff like that. So uh, it is one... interesting to see how they like load their, their uh, objects and stuff. The other one too is like I was driving and then the car just like freaked out and then like it went onto the other side of the street and I was like what the heck? I, there was one I remember that was probably my funniest favorite one. I got a lot of them too. I got a comp together into like a compilation, but uh, I was like going forward on my car right and I I was going super fast. So I stop and I back up like just a couple inches into this car and I go flying like. 50 feet into the yeah. air like yeah see that's that's just happened too i'm like what the heck and i've seen cars do it too like where i'll see a car driving and it'll just be boom you know like flying in there like what the what the hell and i was doing I, the mission one time too and the car in the background just fell into the where i was playing i was like oh this is weird <laughs> i the one my my cousin had it for the longest time and i couldn't i couldn't find my own and then i finally found it when i like almost finished the game but my cousin's one was so funny he would just have this one car stuck in the same spot the whole game and it's like tilted on its side to an angle so it's almost upside down and hanging in the middle of the street and the thing was that he didn't interact with the car but everything else did so if he huh. drove through the car his character would go through but his car would stop and get stuck and he'd be shot through the car oh okay we we'll do one of those things okay yeah, yeah. it's just stuff That's like funny. that uh, little stuff yeah. like that, whereas once again, it's not like the game freezes or breaks, but it's little mm -hmm. uh, inconsistencies in physics. The one thing that did happen for a while that I thought was weird is my trees would get all bendy. Hmm. They would like oh, bend down to the ground. I've seen that too before, I think I've seen that. The, the textures and because I'm playing on like basically old gen still but the only yeah. thing that's upgraded on ours is like we can do 60 frames and even that's not like because i've read reviews where it's not consistent it will go drop down to like 40 come back up yeah to 60. they're not the most consistent on frames um, up in this and then um that's about pretty much oh and then the quicker load times which is awesome i i'm i'm glad that they're those quick load times come in uh handy but um other than that we're still playing kind of like on old gen graphics and other stuff on it. and the yeah. textures on it are not that great um even with like because i can run it not with the greatest frames but i could run it in ultra and it looks mm -hmm. good it looks really good but i mean it look doesn't look any better than any really high definition graphics game released yeah. in the last year or so you know ghost of scene so. looks just as good uh and so like I think that's my problem is I see people on two different camps for it. The camp of like, this is the most amazing kind of game that has come out in so long. And like, in a sense, yes, because nothing has freaking come out in a while. But but this has been hyped since it they first talked about. Yeah. It, right? And so and like kinda, for the that, hype. That's, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's it should that. never be. It should just the overhype is really the issue. And so that's the issue I have now is people overhyping and just like, oh, it looks it looks like sweet delicate ham honey and i was like i mean it looks good and it's a good game and then on the other side people are just like this game is so buggy it's got awful it's garbage and i'm like it's really not and i mean it's really not that buggy even compared to some of the games if i mean, I when mean relatively yeah. speaking i've seen some really buggy games fallout 64 was something <laughs> that was promised to people and they yeah didn't give and deliver on that one and they ended up still not delivering on that game i don't think yeah i, I think they've still I, to this day kind of like let the fans down which is yeah but uh in any case like the point being that 
uh, CD Projekt Red is kind of putting through on this and putting yeah. more work, and they're not done. Yeah, yeah, they're they're keeping it. You know, they're updating it still, even yeah. after all. And I doubt very much media, that they're going to leave. Media. Yeah, and I mean the media has been bad, but a lot of it's circumstantial, and they still have and done good sales. And now they're sued, supposedly. Oh yeah, I mean, but I mean companies get sued all the time. <laughs> it happens, man. So um, I, again, I'm, I'm I can't wait till they uh, yeah just get it to where they want it to be. And multiplayer is another thing I'm excited for, but that one's going to be on the back end. They said for quite a while since they have to kind of you know go in crunch time with this. Yeah, um, but I mean but, it, uh, it needed to come out. It's been hyped yeah. for so That's long. That's another thing and... too. You know, investors are putting money into this, and it's like, where's our game? Where's our money back? You know, and then now on top of that, two fans are like, when's the game coming out? You said it's coming out this summertime, and they know it's not, you know, done. And it's like, well, fuck, we're kind of stuck in the. <laughs> we, I guess, I guess, let's just put the game out and see what happens. <laughs> well, I mean, there's advantages at least on their end for putting it out earlier. They get more test players. They get more money to work on the game. You know what I mean? That's actually, and granted, they still have to pay their investors and do this and this and that. But at the end of the day, they're going to make money from releasing the game, right? Mm -hmm. it, maybe not as much as before. And I once again think that the game is good. It should be purchased yeah, if people like this good. kind of game. Like, I don't, you know, if you I don't think people like, people just need to come into it too, knowing that open world games are. They always have issues. I've, yeah, I've never I, found once one again, that's you, you act perfect. like Red Dead didn't have horses running on midair or bears with their heads turned. You know what I mean? There's always different games in different communities that are open world and just don't quite meet expectations or of mm -hmm. perfection. That's fine. Reality doesn't usually even hit that mark. Uh, but the yeah. game like God of War, you know. They have a set linear story, and they have a you know they don't, and then they had they did do good with adding side missions and stuff like that. I will too, say that there there is something I will say on the cyberpunk that I think does probably inhibit it, which it's a cool thing and a bad thing that I think their open world maintains its function outside of the boundaries. So mm -hmm. a lot of the times games deload objects and personas, and I'm sure it does too to a point. But I've gone back into areas that I've beaten. And uh -huh. there are still items that I had left on the ground there from days yeah. before. And so I yeah. think that that is part of their open world, which is impressive, right, to keep all that in. But also might be a little problematic for their load times. And that those are the differences, right? God of War, that's not going to happen. If you leave an area, everything's going to despawn. You're going to come back, no. and there might not no. even be an enemy to respawn this, there. This game is doing a lot, that's for sure. And it, it's it even the NPCs are still having, like... To be fair, a... they, they have... A, they're interesting. They work and move and go in interesting patterns. Granted, sometimes they fuck up and spin in a circle at high speeds, but have you seen that one? The the AI uh, do that yet? No, I have not yet. I've had cars, enemies, NPCs, and friendly NPCs do it where they just like run around in a circle. It's yeah, funny. I have not seen that at all. <laughs> so fucking funny. Except for when it's an enemy because and then you can't hit them very well because they're tall. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, no. Other than that, I mean, I, I'm I'm still having fun with it. I hope oh, uh, it will be a a fun game to still be. They can, you know, be a game that they're going to keep going at it for a while and still keep I, building towards like it. Like I said, I can't wait to check out the. Uh, I I can't wait to check out the update. I'm hoping that they fix it so I can do my mm, missions that are bugged. <laughs> and if not, it's fine. I'll just do another playthrough and finish the whole damn game again. Cause fuck me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, it, it seems like a good game. And once again, I tell people it's definitely worth the money. Just go into it knowing that you like open world games and want an open world game. If this is your first yeah. open world game, you might not want to shell out $60 for a game that you don't like. You know what yeah. I mean? That's just what I tell everybody. It was like, try something else similar first. There's tons and tons. Just open world games take a lot of your time. That's what I tell people too. I'm like, if you yeah. want to invest your time and be another character, this is, <laughs> this is what you're doing. Uh, said, yeah, definitely. Uh, besides that, I mean, covered the movies, covered the video game. Uh, probably got. Well, a couple I did bring. I left. did bring these guys in. I did see that you had some of your figures. Maybe we'll do that to finish off our segment. Yeah, we'll show off some of these. These are cool. Yeah, I'll touch it uh, from NECA. But let's see. So comics then. Uh, what were you? Uh, I only read a few things. I read Something Killing the Children, number 13. Oh, God. What did I read uh, this week? I don't think I, I read. I mostly Tim caught up on Black. Them. I mostly uh, caught up on manga this week, I think, because One Piece had its thousandth chapter release, so I was mostly doing manga. Okay. 
Yeah, I did. Um, so yeah, Kingdom Black was uh, not too bad. And then um, all the Shonen well, Jumps did like a combo manga with their main characters for One Piece, which was interesting. Okay. Uh, but Gideon on the... Falls has a hefty book that came out this week. Big guy. That's good because they. That's uh, we've this been is waiting the... since their last finish. Yeah, this is gonna be the one that finishes off the story here. That'll so he gave us a nice juicy book to give us a lot before he ends it off. So. That's cool. So they um, they are doing more on the endless winter stuff on DC, but I'm not gonna lie, it does it feels like a cop out event. It doesn't feel very well, interesting. I think there's not that many books solicited for this March. Um, I was reading an article that a lot of artists and writers didn't even know that they're gonna be out of a job uh, on some things that they you know that they were supposed to be working on in projects, and they yeah. only found out because the solicitation just came out for March, and there's only like I think. 31 books coming out for that month wow that's not which is really low i I don't know don't don't go on my word just yet on that one but i i thought it said 30 35 to 31 books but let me look it up here that's rough considering we usually get like 60 books or something more than 80 70 60 books uh dc is that for the total listings or just for dc let me see i'm gonna Oh, this is for DC only. Yeah, this is... Uh... Okay, because I was going to say, for both of them, we probably get a decent amount. For individuals, I'd say it's 10 to 15 a week. So, not counting ones pushed out by, like, secondary distributors. So, that would be roughly up to 60, like you said, from 40 to 60. And then, yeah, that means you would have 10 less than even your lightest usual run for just DC. Mm-hmm. I wonder if this is a blowback from the lunar switch, because uh, I mean, well, are they what? Are, what are they even doing for distribution right now? What's going on with them? Uh, they still have that other. They had two going on, so it was lunar and it was somebody else. I can't remember who the other uh, company was. Um, Let's see, if we can find some, figure it out. Is it US UCS? Yeah, I think that was it. So yeah, Bleeding Cool was the one that posted it up. It was actually this this uh today they posted it up. So Bleeding Cool understands that this month a number of DC comic writers and artists realized that their upcoming work for DC comics may not be quite as upcoming as they thought. They discovered this in some cases by reading the DC Comics solicitations from March 2021. Uh, the reduction in the number of titles, as well as contracts being previously signed with the creators who were meant to be working on the 5G line, have uh, have meant that a number of creators without such contracts have been uh, jettisoned from their titles. Uh, and with oh, and with editorial numbers being uh, decimated over the last year, it seems that whoever was meant to inform such creators of the change and upcoming uh, work may have not been told, uh, may not have told everyone. Yeah, you probably, uh, you probably use your motivation to tell someone else they're fired after you get fired. So <laughs> let's see, in this, right? In December, the DC Comics was solicitating the 52 new items, totaling in about 232, uh, two, sorry, 2,352 pages. Uh, costing two hundred eighty-six dollars, made up to twenty, uh, made of twenty-nine, so three ninety-nine comic book and nine four ninety-nine titles. Um, so and now in March, twenty uh, twenty twenty-one, DC Comics has solicited now thirty-nine items, totaling in a thousand one thousand eight hundred ninety-six pages, costing two hundred twenty-one, made up of sixteen uh, thirteen ninety-nine and twelve four ninety-nine, dubbed stepping over the line at four ninety-nine. <laughs> So yeah, that you can see that that number is that's kind of a lot right there. I think. Uh, I mean, yeah, it it really is when you start considering how I think and Marvel's then, releasing eighty titles in March, something like that. Right, right. And then in March this year, they had sixty two books. Yeah, the, and I mean, we knew that DC and Warner Brothers in general was making large cuts, but I guess we didn't. No one really connected the dots, right, until now. Right. Which, partially because people were missing in the infrastructure to connect those dots for people. Uh Which is sad. You know, it's sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be finding out, like, oh, well, my book's not solicited in three months. What the hell's going on? (laughs) Yeah. Well, it definitely got to suck as, like, because once again, that gives them however many months to go find more work. 
Yeah, and, then, and I uh, wonder, I wonder how many calls. Just, I wonder to how Marvel many, and I, Image. I, I was gonna say how many people are just gonna go over to Marvel and Image, and and probably believe even a lot of these new budding companies we've talked about that have been doing so good, such as AfterShock, uh, and Boom. Boom's been doing pretty good. IDW's got some pretty good stuff. Yeah, AfterShock's been doing good as well. I I like some of the titles they're coming out with. And who was another one that I was kind of my radar there for a little bit? Uh, Vault Comics too has some pretty interesting books that they come out with every once in a while. I can't while. remember if it's Oni Press or Red Five that I was looking out for, but there was one of the new ones I was trying to keep. An Red eye Five on. is uh yeah pretty new, so I'm pretty sure it's that one you're thinking of. It might be Red Five. Um, they're they're the one that are kind of going for more of these um cinematic kind of comic books is what they've been telling people when they hmm. when they do their books. Um. And there is a few yeah that yeah feel cinematic to me at least. I read their um what book was it? It was um ah, I can't even remember. Red Five, um Riptide. There we go. Um hmm. that was it was uh like a kind of like one of those the the world's um weather is changing and causing uh, destruction upon earth kind of comic book. So it it was pretty interesting. I liked it. They came out with another one. Um, which it looks like it's has the Loch Ness monster on it. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, so I, I still got to check it out and see uh, what it's really about. But they've only got again, a that... couple. But there were the one I was looking at was a fractured mind. Yeah, I've heard that one. And then uh, they they are the ones with the Kaiser Soze comic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Other than that, that's all I've read so far. Oh, this came out again. Second coming. The second uh, arc for his. Oh, uh, that's book. cool. That's nice. That's that one was... that was solicited for Vertigo, uh, Vertigo Comics. Yeah, and, and then they had to drop it. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I really I mean, enjoyed know. his first. It was uh, good. First I, it was I good. really liked it. It was really, you know, it was it, a little it, tongue it didn't in cheek. feel like he was trying to, like, you know, take a stab at Yeah, religion, I feel right? like a lot of people would took it the wrong way and they were like, oh, well, he's making fun. I was like, no, I mean, you know, pointing out. You know, you know, the inconsistencies okay, so and stuff. You're not yeah. supposed to talk. You're you know, never that supposed way. to question or doubt. Yeah, I know. I so, but it. yeah, I, I like to just, I just like to, you know, be imaginative and just think of things. It's not like I'm maybe so, like, you know, but still, it was good. Uh, I have to check out this one. I haven't checked out the second arc just yet. Department of Truth just released their yes, other one. I, uh, I was reading that one, and that one so far has been pretty good. I didn't get to finish it just yet. Um, but it, it's talking about kind of like um, the news media and how they how they are a weapon. <laughs> right. Yeah. To make things. I mean, uh, I was wondering if they were going to get into that, especially because they kind of already touched on it in the last one where it was like these forum bloggers and the false flagging of of child yes. deaths in schools. And I was like, yes. all right, yeah, sure. And they do bring up some of the uh, other organizations like the Black Hat and the lady with the X uh, that's, eyes. And they, that's they're cool. talking about there's other forces out there that are trying to stop what they're doing. You know, they want these things to happen and stuff. So um, that's kind of cool that they they're going to they kind of went into that just a little bit more. That is cool. um, I haven't got to finish it just yet, though. So I'm um, got to finish that on my I, list here. I will say there's a couple and I have to check them out still because they're from the last couple weeks and I've been busy with Christmas and cyberpunk and other shit. Uh, but uh, Marvel's been doing a really good job of getting some comics out for their lesser known characters and characters that aren't even heroes in some sense, such as U.S. Agent, Taskmaster, MODOK. Uh, and they're doing well. I feel like they're they're very purposed well. They're not necessarily great comic books, right? But for what they are, which is these like little in depths onto these characters, I think they're interesting. Uh -huh. And I'm really just happier about the fact that they're trying something that's not Avengers, X Men, yeah. Spider Man. You know about what I mean? <laughs> yeah, well, they did MODOK, they did US Agent, they've done Taskmaster. Oh, yeah. US Agent's been pretty good. I haven't checked out Taskmaster. It's on my list here, but... It's cool. I, I was going to do a still. breakdown of it for the channel because of the way... I think it that one so far is my favorite because it really kind of shows you who Taskmaster has become or really is nowadays as a character, which mm -hmm. you'd figure he's like a Slade character, but he's really not. He's more of a... Uh, I get not a Deadpool light, but <sighs> who am I thinking of? I I can't think of the exact characters, but he's mo he's a mercenary, but n with that kind of attitude, but not quite as crazy as Deadpool. Mm -hmm. I um 
I wanted, I haven't checked this out, but I, I picked up that king size Conan book. I yeah, I saw that that came out. How how is I, it looking? Uh, I haven't checked it out yet, but I just I only picked it up because of these people that were in here. So Roy Thomas, boom, that that's the one. I was like already, and then Kevin Eastman. I was like, what? Kevin Eastman from the Turtles? All right. And I was like, okay, that's already good. And then he and he's drawing an issue or a little series in here. So I was like, oh, even better. He's drawing and doing the story. I'll read that. That does uh, sound pretty Chris, interesting. Chris Claremont was another one that I was like, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, that is. I'll a, definitely check this out. I might have to because I usually don't check out too much of the Conan stuff. I enjoy it, but I feel like it's I, uh, all kind of yeah. disconnected. Yeah, I only checked out his um, the Jason Aaron run. And then once he was done, I dropped it after that because then it was Jim, uh, Jim Zapp that did it. But yeah, I'm not a good uh, I'm not a fan of Conan either. And um, uh, it's not even that the I'm... Savage Adventures. Yeah, it's and it's not even that I'm not a fan. It's just like his stories. I always feel are a little disconnected and not too much linear or having a point all the time. I see what you mean. Yeah, it's just sometimes... they're just trying to find ways to kind of put them Make... in Marvel. Yeah, he's <laughs> kind of he's kind of like Vader in a way. In that his stories are more about making Conan look cool than about the story yeah, Conan sits that's, in. That's exactly it. And he is pretty a uh, cool guy, badass. I, oh, yeah, I, Ever since reading the first Jason Aaron, I was like, I'm a, I'm a Conan fan now. But Yeah, and, um, I, and yeah. I've enjoyed Conan since I watched the old Schwarzenegger movies. But, but I, I thought that's cool. There's that a Kevin nice. Eastman panel. So you can definitely like, cool. see his style in it for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's right, it's right the way you've seen it. You're like, oh, that's Kevin Eastman for sure. Uh-huh. Um, He's got a very, like, soft uh soft angles i feel like yes yeah um other than that um i have this on my list to read still i have um <laughs> the murder hobo yeah, from I mean, scout scout yeah. comics that sounds interesting the uh, the first issue yeah is definitely really out there yeah. <laughs> um so this one i'm expecting to be really out there too i have this one too on my list gut ghost and St- uh, stabity bunny stabity bunny uh, they He's always one of the some other characters they have at Scott Comics that they've been doing for a while. Um, and then um, what else we got here? The Gideon Falls, like I said, yeah, I got to read still. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not too sure. Oh, and I did read that new Spider-Man. Um, it does open some more things like about Norman Osborn that we kind of knew was going to happen anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, he yeah. always comes back, you know. So... Yeah, you you have to read that issue and see what you think of that one. But uh, there's that one. Um, other than that, let me see what else we got here. Second coming. Oh yeah, we live. I still got to read issue number three. Just came out. Nice. Been like I've been liking that series or that uh mini series. It's gonna be. Um, I didn't see. know they had this coming out. Oh, this and year. then I have this one book that Robert Kirkman came out with randomly. That was like. I don't, like it just came out randomly at the comic shops. I didn't even know they were gonna get it. Solid blood. Hmm. Yeah, he's. I don't know. He. You can look up the YouTube uh, video that he posted about it. <laughs> There's the new. Um, other than that, I think that was pretty much the ones I wanted to read here today, at least. <laughs> Ooh, that's me. You see what else we got here? Yeah, Universe really? Agent Two came out. Yeah, so read that. So that, that seen that Spider before. Woman, Marvel. Yep, and King uh, Black Two. Ma- Maestro, Excalibur, Doctor Doom. That's about to be ending. Yeah, it's been uh, all right. the 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 second half of the run wasn't as good as the first half. Harley Quinn, the the Batman White Knight story. I gotta catch uh, up on that one still. Me too. I haven't read the first issue. Um, Undiscovered Country, which I think I need to take off my list. I I wouldn't really care for the first issue. Uh, Transformers: uh, Back to the Future. <laughs> uh, At least so they know one. what people want. <laughs> Spawn three thirteen is coming out. We have Sleeping Beauties. That's the one with um, Joe uh, Joe Hill and Stephen. Oh no, it's Owen King and Stephen King did this book. Oh, it's yeah. a, it was a novel first, but uh, now they brought it to comic form. So mm-hmm. him and his son are working on this one. So it's supposed to be only 12, uh, 12 issues. So we're only on issue, what, four? <laughs> so you still got a while for that one. There's um, some interesting. Comics let's see. That I don't remember. Oh, yeah. And I can't wait to read this. Uh, Transformers Beast Wars is coming out soon. Nice. They're doing like... So I'll read those here soon. 
But that, I think that's coming out next year. Oh, Redneck issue came out from your so, boy Donny Cates. I gotta yeah. read that. I'm still got, two issues behind. I was gonna say I'm still behind on that one, so I gotta catch up. Um, Philadelphia. Uh, I still oh, haven't man, checked I, that one out yet. Yeah, you might like it. I like it. It's uh, Sean Alexander does some really cool art. Um, Chris Rock even actually praised it. <laughs> So, yeah, there's a couple of those things here. Um, there's this big giant book, too. Peace Metal from Aftershock, actually. It's just a one shot. It's a, and it's, uh, I always, <laughs> this is always funny. Uh, I don't know if you ever see that guy's name everywhere, Colin Bunn. Uh... He literally writes like almost, I want to say almost half of all the comics that ever come out every month. Um, he's always doing something else. Like, this guy's doing like so much stuff all the time. Um, I see his name everywhere, all the time, with Marvel, all these other indies. Um, just look up his name, and you'll just see all the stuff under sure his belly. He's, like, this yeah. guy's busy. <laughs> he probably um, is. But uh, he's, yeah, I, he does some pretty cool stuff, though. I, there's some stuff, like, eh, didn't care for it, but there is some stuff he has done that I have enjoyed from him. Um, and he does do some pretty cool horror stuff. So nice. I read a book that he did that's actually supposed to be a TV show coming out. I don't know who knows when, but um, it's called Bone Parish. You mm -hmm. might actually like it. It's, um... It's about a drug that it's almost like cocaine, but instead um, they're using the ashes of dead people. And uh, when you snort it, it actually you actually live that person's life. So like at the beginning of the book, one person is snorting something. And he's like uh, he's living a rock star's life. And and then what ends up happening though is that he kind of it's almost like an ode. Oh, he almost OD towards the end, but then when and it's like the like the ghosts of his spirit came out from the ashes that he inhaled, and they they killed him. <laughs> so it's an interesting story. They they involve some of the cartel as well because they want this new you know sought out drug that's uh, only one person knows how to make it. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a very interesting story. I think they only did twelve issues as well for that too. Is a mm -hmm. a one hitter too, so it wasn't like an ongoing series as well. So that one you can get done pretty good and quick if you want to check it out anytime nice. but I, I i find it in, it was an interesting story so i thought that was one of his better ones hell yeah uh, anything else in that you checked out that you really enjoyed then um not this week like i said i was busy like catching up on christmas stuff and movies and manga mostly like i said because they had done <laughs> all those they had done that uh shonen release for one piece where they have all the main characters from all the other uh series uh, like coming together to congratulate Oda for his thing. Oh, okay, nice. Because I think there's only a couple series in Shonen that have made it to a thousand chapters, and most nice. of them aren't okay. usually that po as popular as One Piece is, mm -hmm. which is interesting to say that they get that far and are not that popular, but is still true. Uh, let's see. I did catch. I caught up on My Hero. I caught up on One Piece. I caught up on. God, just a bunch of these other manga that I've been waiting to get into. And some of them are getting good and some of them are getting bad, which sucks. I It always sucks when you have a good series that you were enjoying and then you it starts kind of going downhill. Uh -huh. And there's a couple manga, anime shows, comics, etc. that do it. But the one I was reading is a Korean one called The Gamer, which I don't think that one will get an anime. The one that is going to get an anime that I think is probably going to go uphill is uh, Record of Ragnarok, I think it's called. They just did the anime teaser trailer for it, so it should be coming out next year. Maybe we'll do okay. that one next time. Nice. And it's interesting. It's basically just like a super fighting-focused anime, so that's literally all it's going to be. It doesn't have like some deeper story or any shit like that. <laughs> I mean, it's got its own like stories going on, but... Besides that, I don't think there's much else unless you have something you wanted to do before we're um, uh, before we're done. No, you know, I was trying to think if there's anything else that we needed to talk about. Um, I guess let me just go over my list here. I think I had my list. Um, well, I guess well, there is that coming to America trailer just dropped. Oh yeah, Amazon I did. Prime. I did hear about that. I haven't checked it out the trailer pretty yet. Pretty good. But... Look pretty good. So I'm just want um, to see Eddie Murphy in something after all this time. <laughs> and our our Senio's coming back too, so it's That's gonna be good. cool to see them back together and yeah. kind of do something. But uh, yeah, so that that looks interesting. I'll check that out for sure. Um, uh, you know, I 
oh, I guess another show that we can, if you want to ever check it out, but there, it's a comic book that's going to sci-fi. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's the Resident uh, Alien. Resident Alien. Yeah, check it out. You might like it. Um, it's just check. about this alien who comes to our planet who's just kind of interested in us and everything, and he just he he becomes a doctor, and so he lives and pretends to be. He wears human skin, and uh, he just learns about stuff and all that, and so that's it. Um, he's not to invade us there or anything. He's just there to pretty much learn there and just live there. <laughs> Um, so it's it's a pretty interesting uh, show, I think. That one will be pretty interesting. Um, Black Cover finally is going to start its next big uh, anime, in the anime at least, uh, next big arc on January 5th. They needed um, to give space, it time. Space and Kingdom I don't, is the next one. Yeah, I don't think they gave it enough time. They're still midway through the Spade Kingdom as they as is in the comics. So, That's the one of the main guys still have to catch up on. Which is that? It's um, also one of the ones that I felt... I don't know. It was one of the ones that a lot of people really enjoy, but I think it hits the Naruto quest of like yeah. Shonen Shonen Jump, um, yeah. kind of. Um, it's good, know. but we'll see how long it stays good, and hopefully, it doesn't fall down the trope of filler. Yeah, so it's far been it's done pretty good. good for me so far. I like it, so we'll see. It's um, pretty good. I'm waiting to see what they do with this section of the story, how they pull it, because mm -hmm. I felt like the pacing wasn't and the arcing wasn't all that great following the last arc but we'll see how it goes in the spade kingdom and everything um, my hero academia season five is announced for uh that, march 27 and that one's the same thing they're they need more time <laughs> they, so they're, there's right they're gonna catch up they're absolutely gonna catch up there's no like they were already so close to catching up this last time uh -huh. now there's very little like i'm trying to think of where exactly they're at and i'm like yeah that's like a season's worth if even of information mm -hmm. that's gonna go on there's a lot of stuff and i'm sure they can stretch it as they do with some of the animes but it won't have the same pacing or maybe it will i know they have added some filler episodes into my hero though so uh i know they're not afraid to do that there i, I i'm hoping that they kind of get it on the same level of of what uh, Attack on Titans doing now is that they're releasing this as they're finishing the manga. They're they're basically going to finish nearly at the same time. Cuz uh, yeah, that one's uh that one I can't wait to start up. The the subtitles will come out, but I have to watch it with my son. He likes it so we have to wait <laughs> until the dub comes out in January. It'll be but, interesting. Uh... I mean, you'll probably enjoy this piece. Uh I w I was all right with it. I felt like I enjoyed most of the series, but it, I liked it hit... the last season. It was interesting to kind of say that you guys were all lied to and you guys have just been hiding in this giant hole when there's actually been this whole industrial world already kind of been yeah. going on and stuff. You're like, wow. So, and, so that was that was interesting to add that kind of stuff, and then to kind of explain how the giants or the titans kind of were created and that. So last season was okay. I'm hoping, like you said, that. Uh, I like this last and final season, and we'll see how they how they end it off. I think that's the real question a lot of people are having currently is how it's going to end off. Uh, I don't know. Um, for me, the current ending it doesn't change wouldn't change the way the story is up to the point it is. So it's I don't really care much how it ends. I wanted to see how it got to its end, and yeah. now that it's there, I'm like, all right, cool, it's over. <laughs> I it was one of the ones I actually really enjoyed the earlier seasons. Yeah, but, I think the seasons were good. I, yeah, uh, I really did. My favorite ones. My issues with uh, Attack on Titan are the same issues I have with Game of Thrones and who else does it? There's another one that's famous, but it's they rely on these the killing of your favorite characters to make the show good. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? They they rely on these shock deaths. And that's not bad. It's cool. It adds to the writing early on when they're very focused on writing. But the longer and longer you go doing it, the harder and harder it is to do in a natural way. Where you're just like killing them off for the plot of the story and not just for shock value. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. I mean, it could end in a totally unpredictable way that like blows me away and like supersedes all my expectations. Uh, having said that, as always, it does have great uh, animation and looking good. 
you know, they do a pretty good job on that anime in general, I think. Uh-huh. So that that does help when you have these uh the other thing is it's not like one of the big five. It only has four seasons of some number of episodes. It's not this super long story. No. And it's no. and it's not produced consistently every week. Which I like. I like those ones yeah, where they, it's... they kinda have an they have an end or a beginning and an end. They have it planned out pretty much already what they want to do and Yeah, this um, one like didn't this one didn't feel that way to me. This one felt written pretty roughly. But it does it did finally finish its stuff, so that was good. Oh. Um, I mean, other than that, uh, it's kind of pretty much it that I've seen so far that's supposed to be coming out here. Um, like always, we still always have action figures <laughs> coming out. Um, there's still a lot to be coming out. Oh, Sp- um, Tom McFarlane's supposed to be shipping out his uh, Kickstarter spawn figures um, here soon. Nice. I've seen some people in Hong Kong get them already because that's you know where the factory's at. So they're probably going to get theirs a little faster than we are. But I'm hoping to expect to see mine in the mail uh, next month. And- pop that bad boy open nice. that would be pretty cool so there's that one um more NECA releases for next year they're they're going hardcore in the cartoon turtle still um i just picked up like i said i wanted to show you these at least i had these uh these um do you remember toka Rausa, right from the action uh live action series the number two one the secret yeah, yeah. of the use yeah it was the wolf and the, the, the snapping turtle um so yeah NECA just released uh just actually got these shipping out here this month and uh, they were only pre-ordered through their website, so you're not going to find these like in Walmart, Target, or any local comic shop or anything like that. Um, they said it's supposed to be just a, it was going to be a one and done, uh, but we'll see. Maybe they maybe they'll do another production run on these guys. I, th- I think they really did a cool job with them. Um, you know, there's uh, some cool like sculpting work on this. I thought you know they have the little tire kind of shield there. They even actually put some real metal kind of chain on the back here, and with the grill kind of holding the grill on the front there. So I thought that was cool. Um, then my favorite one, I think, though, is uh, it's got to be um, Toka. Um, they did a really good job on this. The sculpting work on the back piece is just amazing. I think. Yeah, it looks pretty good, man. And those those spikes are like kind of actually pretty sharp. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, my favorite though it has to be this right here, where um, he can actually um, articulate his um, his eyebrows, so you can kind of get him into these weird kind of uh, expressions here. So if you kind of want to make him look mad, and uh, you kind of open up his mouth, make him look like he's mad, or you can make him look like he's you know happy. Or actually, there we go, surprised. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> And then, yeah, you just move his brow and you can make him, like, question things. <laughs> so I thought those are really cool. I really like that. Um, I think they did a really cool job of, like, adding that cool little feature right there. You can even make him look like he's happy right there. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it came with some cool accessories, too. Um, this one came with kind of like a, a ball uh, or a pipe here. The other one came with, like, a tree log. Um, they also came with the donuts <laughs> that they are fed fed with nice. in the in the movie so those will actually pop out to you and those are actually pretty sculpted well too i think that's interesting they're all together there okay yeah and then you can yeah there's like the little powder on the on the top <laughs> so i thought that was cool and then you can just add it yeah into the little box and it says simple donuts so that thought that was cool just little things are like that's cool i think NECA does and then they added another uh donut that's like half eaten and it's got the like little pill that's supposed to be given to them to try to make them small again um, so that's really cool. So just little things like that are awesome. Um, yeah, these guys are just awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I was happy to get these and uh, put them in my shelf for sure. But um, yeah, so other than that, um, there's just uh, always more stuff to be coming out, at least the action figures for a while. So I can't think of anything the next big release that I was excited for. Um, there's just some cool Predator stuff that's coming out too. They're doing the, I guess it's the 35th anniversary. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it is the uh I can't I thought it said it on here. Yo, yeah, thirtieth anniversary of Predator two. Nice. Um so NECA's doing all of the I don't know if you remember in the Predator two movie, uh at the very end, you know, um he sees all those different kind of predators and they all have the different masks and stuff and looking cool and different. <laughs> um so NECA has done those characters before in the past. Um, but they're redoing them on as their ultimate line, and the ultimate line is kind of like where has a little bit more articulation and uh, comes with tons more accessories. So gotcha. those are pretty cool. So they got those coming out. Um, other than that, what was uh, 
there was one other thing I guess I wanted to talk about from them. I can't remember what it was though. Let me see, hold on real quick here. Let me see if I can pull that up real fast. Oh, that was cool that they announced. Um, which I'll probably get those. Uh, they're doing the the boys um, <laughs> NECA figures, so they'll have Starlight and um, why am I forgetting his name right now? Um, the main guy. They're not the main guy, but the the one that's like Superman. Why am I forgetting his name? Uh, Homelander. Oh, La- Homelander. There we go. Duh. <laughs> why was I forgetting his name? So they have those guys coming out here and planned out. So those those will be pretty fun. Um. Other than that, I guess that's pretty much all I had on my list here, unless there's something else that you uh, wanted to bring up here last minute. Uh, not that I can think of. I mean, we got, I guess, you know, we won't be meeting again until after the New Year. So Happy New Year to, you know, our fans and stuff. And Happy Christmas or Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays to whatever they may celebrate. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the new year for another year of Comic Convos. This is, uh, actually, this marks, I think, four or five years that we've been doing it. Yeah, I think so. So it's been quite a while. Yeah, no. we, got, we got a birthday coming up. Technically, this it would have been earlier this month because we started near the beginning of December. But, but, you know, we'll figure it out. And, as always, we appreciate everybody who watched and who watches Present and Past. We appreciate you as well as all our... All of our subscribers on Patreon, etc. We'll uh, past, present, and future appreciate y'all as well. So, thank you, and we'll see you next time on Comic Convos. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com 3D and get exclusive access for as low as a dollar.